everyone, and welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. If you are a doctor of any kind and you are struggling with money, which maybe you're not going to admit that you are, but you want to build the lifestyle that you thought you always could have in the medical profession, and this is the perfect podcast interview to listen to. And likewise, if you're not a doctor of any kind, but you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, sometimes it helps for you to listen to uh, other people's struggles off the beaten path and other niches that you may not be in because you might get a fresh perspective or tackling some of these business problems that you personally are having are not as painful because they're off in some other space, but they're having similar problems as you are. So this is also the most important podcast interview that you'll ever listen to today. And the reason that why it's going to be such a great show because we have Dr. Mike Wu Ming, MD, MPH here. He is a physician strategist. He is an online health influencer, and he is a medical practice owner. So, Dr. Mike, glad to catch up. Glad to be talking to you. Robert, thanks again. It's an honor to be on this podcast. Yeah, and it's an honor to have you. Uh, we did a little bit of a swip swap. I was on your show, and you were on my show. And in this day and age of it being so crowded, so competitive, having to stand out, we all have to maybe suck it up a little bit and do some of that publicity, right? And look into what podcasts we can show on and share our expertise. And so that's why I like a lot about you is you're not just a doctor, you do all these different things. So if someone said, what, who's Dr. Mike in a nutshell? Who does he help? What makes him different? What would you say about that? Well, that's a great question. I guess, you know, the first thing that comes out is people see the doctor and, you know, on my before my name. And so you know, I am a physician, first and foremost. I have a, a medical practice uh, uh, that I own uh, mostly. We do a med spa and we do age management, but aesthetics, those kinds of things, as well as the uh, vampire treatments. So I know that you have helped market. Uh, and I'm also an entrepreneur. Uh, and that's been always been in my blood ever since... Uh, you know, I started my, my first business in medical school. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of, of uh, having bosses. I, I like to proudly say that I am unemployable. And so um, I, that is probably the best answer. And what I do is I help other uh, businessmen, I help other physicians, health, health practitioners start up their own business, both brick and mortar as well as online. And it's my way of giving back. I love working with with new people and I love working with startups and I definitely understand the ups and downs of, of being an entrepreneur. Fantastic. And what I like what you said there is like you're unemployable. And I think that we all need to find the right fit for us, right? Like 40, 50 years ago, you'd find your one job at the working at the coal mine or at the gas station. And that was just your track. And in this day and age, we all have choices. And maybe if we're unhappy with where we're at, maybe, it, maybe we, we, uh, do need a boss or we just need a different boss or we need to partner up with someone who excites us or maybe we need to go out completely on our own and and be that boss and, and but uh, but the point is that in this day and age we can try different things and maybe reinvent ourselves maybe five to ten times throughout our our life so when you say that you are a doctor i imagine that you didn't just start off as a doctor entrepreneur right like I, you hear a lot about how these doctors they go to medical school, they uh, get into a lot of debt, they do like the, the hospital years of uh, just kind of trying things out, surviving, paying the bills. What was the early, uh, uh, the early newly minted doctor years like for you? I think what, how I first became an entrepreneur was really is because I needed to. I, I think the first, my first real foray into developing my own business was actually when I was in residency when I was a doctor in training. Um, I trained at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona in family medicine, and I did what you're not supposed to do. I bought a house, and my wife at the time was a librarian, and during my first year of training, uh, she got pregnant, and they didn't have uh, family leave back then, and so when she got pregnant and had to go on maternity leave, she had to leave her job. And suddenly, I lost half my income. Now, as a medical resident, you're not making a lot of money. And now we've lost half of our income. So I had to figure out what to do. And what I did was I started a business online. And this is back in the day. And I know, Robert, you're, uh, you're like me. You're, you're here at, at, the, at the infancy almost of the internet. This is back in 95, 96. And I said, I need to see if I could start a business. And what I was doing at the time was 
they knew I was a bit geeky in my residency program. They wanted me to build a website. Now, there wasn't any YouTube videos back then or anything that would help educate me. I went to Barnes and Noble and, and you know, taught myself HTML. And I built a crude looking, you know, the old 90s website that we all know and love uh, for my residency program. And what happened was I started to get questions. I created, I put a little guest book. Remember the old, the old guest books that they used to have on these home pages. And I was building a website and what I was getting I was getting inquiries on people who wanted to get into the medical residency of their choice. So, so just for those who might not know, after you go into medical school, you can decide on your different specialties. It could be emergency medicine, surgery, family medicine, whatever. And I got into my first choice and they were asking me questions on how to do it. And so I started to ask, like, giving people advice for this. And what happened was, I just got busy because as an intern, I'm working 100 plus hours. Plus, I got uh, my wife who, who's leaving. I'm stressed out about that. And I said, you know what? I, you guys are asking me all these questions, and I, I'd love to help you, but I don't have time to answer it. And what I'll do is I will print up my frequently asked questions of how to get into the residency of your choice. And, and Robert, back then, there was no PDF or anything like that or how to deliver it digitally. And I said, give me, write me a check for $25. <laughs> and what I did is I went to Kinko's and I printed out like my favorite questions and, and answers of it. And I send it to them. And it re it's really funny looking back at it, but, and I didn't think anything of it, but then what happened was crazy. I started to get checks in the mail from all of these different uh, pre-med students and international doctors who wanted to get into us. And then I said, I might be hitting onto something. Now, I didn't know anything about information products or selling content. I was just like, I said, I'm kind of desperate and we need to get in some money. And uh, I created my first uh, information product. And then what that led to was my wife was saying, hey, look, we got these checks in the mail. You know, I can like, I've noticed the questions you're getting like, how do you, is they don't know how to put together like a, a resume. They don't know how to write a personal statement. And I knew that there were services like that in my medical school. I said, why don't we offer the same thing, but we'll offer it online. And what happened was we started developing services. And again, I developed my first information product business. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I got wealthy on or I got rich. I mean, we, we had the business for about a few years until I decided, you know, got, got into my real jobs. And so we got it for a few years, but it really helped us in where we were really struggling to help pay the bills. She could work at home. And it developed my first information products and services. And that was like, this is pretty amazing because I'm just getting these checks and I'm not working, not substituting time for money. And I am helping people by just giving content that I know and then uh, getting paid for it. So that, that, that is the kind of my, my first uh, foray into entrepreneurship. Fantastic. And what's, what's cool about that is that, well, first of all, it's always fun to think at how, how just old fashioned things used to be, right? How low tech everything was like you had to go to your mailbox and get a check in the mail that someone had to wait, who knows how many days <laughs> to get it. And then you had to go and cash the check. And then you had to go to Kinko's and make your copy or get your pile of copies from before and then put that in an envelope and, and then mail it back. But I mean, that's how that mail order stuff has been since the, the 60s and 70s, right? But what's good about that is that the, the principles are still the same, right? And nowadays, like, it's all fast and it's instant and it's digital. And, and sometimes we're expected to give things away for free on, on a podcast. And then the, the real good information is the thing that's sold. But what I like a lot about that is that, first of all, there were, there were things that maybe at, at first were easy and common and simple for you. And so it didn't even really occur to you much, it seems like, to sell the information until people were asking these questions. And then they were asking the questions again and again. So then you realize, right. well, I'm not wasting my time uh, just answering some obscure off the wall thing. Like people are like, they don't have the answer to this. And maybe there are some other resources available here or there, but they're not offered online. They're not easily accessible. If people are asking these in a guest book of all places, then they're just not getting the answers they need. And I mean, that's still a thing today. People are still looking around the internet with these uh, desperate problems and they maybe need like more of a step-by-step -step system or something more specific to their needs. And then you, you went from that stage to having a little bit of, of a, like a test balloon 
and you, you created something simple, this frequently asked questions uh, printout, and then you, you, just, you just said, okay, I'm just gonna spend some time making this and see how it sells. And then once it sells, you're like, well, now I have a proven uh, thing here because it's not just thing that people are asking for or downloading, they're actually paying money to get it. And then you listen to not just everyone on, in the whole community of the whole internet, you listen to those exact buyers about what they wanted from then on. And I mean, I, I think that you and I both have experienced that of you create some kind of product that first of all, you don't even know people want it, but then they do. And then from there, it leads into all these other paths of these other problems people have and solutions that uh, you then provide. So, so you said that this information product was kind of your, your first success. And then that led into the, the real jobs, the real businesses. So then like, what did those sorts of lead to? What are these real businesses we're talking about? Well, well, I had it until I got out of residency. And so my real job was my first job as a doctor, as a physician, seeing patients there. And that, and then at that time, you know, it was like, okay, now I'm making, making the big bucks. And right. So <laughs> I became an employee. And then when I became an employee, I remember getting my first check. And then I was like, um, I think something's missing here because <laughs> the, the, the money that I was guaranteed is not the money that I'm getting in my check. And then I re learned all about things like FICA and taxes and all these kinds of things. And the other thing that I learned is when I had a guaranteed contract, it wasn't that I was guaranteed that amount of hours. I could be working 40 hours. I could be working 60 plus hours. I'm still getting the same amount. And so that got me really, uh, you know, disgruntled and, and, you know, here I am, I'm getting these checks in this business and it's it, you know, this home business that it's really working. But now I'm, you know, working, helping patients, which I still love to do. I still love medicine, but I didn't love what medicine was doing to me. So I would be getting uh, these new positions. So for example, they wanted me to see more geriatric patients. So they put me on as the nursing home director for three nursing homes. I would do extra call in the hospital um, because they wanted me to be more well-rounded. And I started to get all of these different positions and with no increase of in my pay. And th there's a reason why many doctors and many healthcare professionals are getting burnt out is we're, we're getting, we're, we're losing our autonomy. We're getting decision made by the powers that be that may or may not have our patients uh, uh, best intentions in mind. And so that's when I realized that I, slowly becoming unemployable and maybe there's something to this internet thing that uh, is attracting me more. So I remember going to my first conference, uh, internet business conference, 2003, uh, guy you probably remember, Carl Galetti, the internet marketing super conference. And, and at that conference on stage was Jeff Walker at his first uh, event speaking. Um, uh, who else was there? Uh, Ryan Dice who probably looks about the same age as he did back then. Uh, but he was probably like 13 back then. He was right? like 13. That was his first time in there. And, and if, you, if you don't know some of the names, these are probably one of like the, you know, the, the I quote gurus in the internet business space. And I eventually met uh, Frank Kern, who you knew, uh, not at that event, but the uh, Armin Warren's big seminar, I think I took, went there like a few months later. And I see this guy and he's, uh, and, and Frank's a friend. I call him a friend of me. <laughs> and I see this guy, he's got long hair, he's got a black shirt, black pants, uh, looks a bit disheveled. It, it looked like some guy uh, that I might have to give a dollar to on the side of the road. And I see him and then like, there was like as he comes to the room, like there's like this hush. And all of these attendees were like, hey, that's Frank Kern. I go, that's Frank Kern? And he's on stage and he's, you know, swearing and talking to a story, but I, the man was brilliant. And here I was working 50 to 60 hours a week and I'm seeing this guy and I don't know what to think. And it, this guy's a, a millionaire and I'm going, I went through all of this school and I'm seeing this. And I, I told Frank this story and, and he laughs at it, but I go, you were one of the main reasons why I got into it because I said, if he can do it, then I can do it too. <laughs> And so maybe right. it was if, more if, the, if this homeless looking guy can do it, then <laughs> me, a doctor, maybe has a chance. Right. Yeah, it was more of an ego different thing. And so I eventually ended up becoming one of his students. I, I followed, you know, followed where the success. I had some other um, gurus, quote, gurus that I befriended to help kind of show me the ropes and uh, learn about taking the principles as you talked about 
understanding about is if you have information that people will want that uh, helps people change their lives, having to do something with um, health or relationships or increasing their income, then you have a niche that you can go to and, and just telling people what you know and then getting paid for it uh, on your own time. And it's not substituting time for money. So that's always been my kind of megaphone and to, and to helping uh, many, many of my colleagues who are getting burnt out, or even if you're not a doctor and you're working for someone else. And, and again, there's nothing wrong to it. There's definitely people who love the uh, stability of being employed, getting the, you know, the code, health insurance and benefits and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I think that how the world works is because of entrepreneurs. And, you know, if we can do some good and then get paid while doing it, um, you know, that's kind of been my, uh, I guess, message. And I said, that's something that I want to do. And that's kind of my message in my life. And that's why I love connecting with yourself and, and others who kind of take that mantra about just, you know, sharing content and then sharing, you know, the, the benefits of entrepreneurship. Right. And as you said, be yourself, like Frank Kern decided to look the way that he looked. I mean, you, you can choose to shower or not or, or shave or grow your it or not. At, but why not just express the, the person that you want to be and and focus on the important things? And so when, when you're explaining these these things like, you know, having information product and and uh, go out there and network, what really uh, hits hard for me is that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Right. You don't have to just completely quit our jobs and then put out some, some eBooks or put out some courses. And it's probably better if we have these multiple streams of income. So like you said, like the, the wife got pregnant had to quit the librarian job and you were still working as a doctor, but then also create this other supplemental income. So it's, uh, and um, me, myself, I had, I probably, it took me about three years to quit my job. And the whole time, all these other internet marketers were saying, well, why don't you just like go all in and quit it? And I'm just like, because I want to, I want to kind of have the best of both worlds, right? I want to have my cake and eat it too. I want to have maybe the, the stability of this job that is maybe a little bit of a career path, but doesn't quite pay as much as I'd like. And then also when I go home, kind of ha have the fun and, uh, you know, generate this as extra income and then maybe see which wins or see which is a, a better fit. So with you doing these multiple things, I know that like uh, at the time you had uh, the, you know, the information products and the, the day job, and now you have multiple businesses. Do you have any secrets to share with us about how to just find the time for everything? Because I'm sure that some, even some of the doctors who might be listening to this show are thinking, well, it's, it so sounds good for you that like, you know, you can uh, go and off at conferences, but they might say, I'm a busy doctor, I've got commitments. So how do you find the time and how do you find the energy to do multiple things at once here? Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll address that. But one thing that I do want to, to mention too is when I hear doctors say that, that they don't have the time, um, when I ask them more about they don't have the time, they definitely do have the time. And most, a lot of times they don't have the motivation uh, to do it. They, you know, they say they don't have the time, but then they're, you know, they're watching TV, they're, you know, playing on their phone. If you really, like, you need to do something, you need to change it, you're, you'll find the time to do it. For myself, like I said, when my wife got pregnant, I didn't have any half an income, so I had to do something. And I was already working 100 plus hours a week as an intern, you know, getting a second job wasn't going to cut it uh, for it. So it's really that, that you kind of want it. But, but like I said, um, I've always been, you know, I've been trying to at least, you know, and, and I'm never always going to get there is, you know, increase my productivity, be a productivity in that buying courses like yourself, like, like that you provide, like the time management for a for crack that you, you, you did that you could still buy right <laughs> yeah. online as well. Um, and so I've just been a, a productivity nut and I, and I've gone through things like, should I do paper planners? Should I do uh, an app? On there and I keep switching things so I'm never gonna perfect it but what I what I've done is um, I've kind of now come to across is is when they say like you can multitask I think that's a, a misnomer because it's what happens is you're, you're, you get kind of scattered so what I've done uh, primarily is and I forgot where I learned this from is I try to determine so I've got multiple businesses I have my clinic I also co-managed lots of different clinics the first thing is I have a team, so I have a personal assistant. Um, that helps me out a lot of time. Her name is Jenny. She's worked for me over 10 plus years. And uh, you know, she helps manage things that I'm not really great at, like customer support 
and managing things like if I'm speaking and, and, and managing flights and hotels and those kinds of things. Um, those are the th kinds of things. So I outsource a lot of different things. Uh, in my own personal life, like, you know, we have um, aids for our, our kids when they were younger. We've had, you know, gardeners, those kinds of things. So those kind of things that I don't like to do or I'm not great at, I have other people much better at, at doing those kinds of things to help me. And then kind of focus on, like, what are my big pictures? Um, what, what I learned was, you know, no, learning from someone like, um, and I don't want to be, this to be polarizing, but, you know, with, with Trump, you know, when he had his real estate business, you know, he wasn't the one making sure that the roofs were, you know, were, were steady and the bathroom fixtures were all, all there, right? He was just managing things from the top. And so what I've tried to do is to manage um, being at the top of my businesses and let the people who are much better at running the business uh, really kind of lead the business. So for example, uh, yesterday we, we tried to have a, a meeting once a month from our, our clinic um, and it's a two hour meeting and I'm leading the meeting, but I'm leading it with my office manager. So I, you know, my clinic right now, it's operating as I'm talking with you and they're managing the the day to days dealing with the patients. I have a nurse practitioner who's working there all day. She contacts me if she has any questions, but for the most part, I find people who are talented and who are independent and be able to handle that day-to-day -day kind of stuff, um, dealing with patients, those kinds of things. Because what happened was, and I see this a lot of times when, when doctors start their own clinic or med spas, is they are their number one employee, right? So they're seeing the patients, but they're also being involved in payroll. They're dealing with um, answering the phones, and you can't do that. And it certainly didn't get to that point where I'm at today, where I'm there like once a week or half day a week. Uh, it takes time, but I think where it starts is, is just finding great talent. And also the other t thing is I'm a bit of a, have a bit of a control issues <laughs> and you can't do that if you want to grow and if you want to scale. So that's another thing that I had to learn is to be able to back off and to not, not micromanage things. I work with doctors who have their own clinics, and I saw one where he basically says, you know, I don't know how you're finding employees these days, they're not doing what I want, and he's going through employees, you know, um, in and out, they're here, and then they're leaving, but what's happening is he's micromanaging them, and, and you know, he's pissing them off, and he's not getting anything done, and there was, you know, it was, it was uh, not surprising that his business wasn't doing well. Um, so in terms of that, I guess the first thing is just finding, you know, the talent, you know, to do this um, and, and, and letting them be in, independent and then kind of watching everything. Um, that, that's my first thing. And then second thing is, is something I, I recently read in a book by, um, what's his, his name is uh, Fertitta. He owns the Houston Rockets and he has something called, he says, know the numbers. And a lot of, and this is something that I've been learning about is like, know the numbers in your business, know about ROI, know about if you have products and services, how much are these products costing you, but how much are you selling and are you making money or are you not? And a lot of times an entrepreneur, you know, like we do a big launch and we're all super excited, we're all pumped up, but then, you know, things happen. You might get refunds or chargebacks and you might have to hire a programmer. And now the programmer is, asking for more money and get to you know, where there's something wrong with the, with the software. So you got to pay them more money. Um, and then what happens is we just kind of like look at the big number, but then when we like realize all the different expenses, uh, then we like, Oh crap, what's going on? Uh, and then we don't find out until it's too late that we got to shut down the business. So that's something that I'm still striving to do is, is having it. I would love to be able to like look at all my numbers and, and know, by the day how the business is doing but it's those kinds of things that as an entrepreneur they're not going to really teach you what to do you just kind of have to figure it out um but yeah those are a couple of things that i could share just off the top of my head and, and that, that's great and i'm hearing it's, it's almost like we could almost assemble like a, a thinking for a rich type of yeah. like list of attributes for entrepreneurs to have here because what i'm hearing from you is a, a lot of it is like the, the self-discovery and trial and error. Like you said, you try different productivity tools and day planners. And I can relate to, I was, I, 
what still works for me the best is just you know writing down some tasks on a piece of paper but like i've messed with the apps and uh like platforms like focus at will where they like play sounds of like the rain pitter <laughs> pattering down and things like that and and sometimes it's like you try different things and one system works and then it works for you for a while. And then for whatever reason, like the, I don't know, the brain pathways change, but, but it's like never, never fixed, right? Always in motion. So I think that that's a really, a really good tip right there is if you don't have any kind of a productivity system, if you just wing it, that won't work. Maybe try different things. And I mean, they're inventing all, all kinds of new ways to be more productive over time. I mean, you could probably go on Fiverr or Upwork and hire someone just to like, give you a phone call or send you a text every day just right. to make sure you're, you're sticking to your goals. There's all kinds of crazy outside the box things uh, that we're doing. But then you also mentioned there about how there will always be those disasters. So maybe it's better to embrace the chaos, right? To be ready for, or maybe not be ready, but when the programmer wants more money or when the, uh, when the, the app crashes or when the employee quits, maybe we just know that there's going to be some crazy things happening and for you to uh, adjust and then it also seems like you're saying here that uh, like be, being a control freak is good as long as you kind of point the, the fire hose in the right direction, right? Because we might just be uh, messing up our own business if we're watching and not having the trust and not having that ability to let go of what the, the employees are doing. And maybe we need to be like a, a control freak at first and figure out, you know, who's a good fit or who's that good talent we're hiring. But then at a certain point, maybe redirect that into like you were saying, take some time off, figure out the big picture, figure out what your big plan is, and maybe apply the control freakness to the numbers so that you really know where your business is at. So let people do those, uh, those I mean, still important, but kind of lower wage tasks like answering the phone or figuring out appointments because there's only one of you, uh, but it seems like that's kind of like a long process, right? In, in uh, letting go of the ego and kind of knowing where your strengths and weaknesses are and let someone else hand, handle the weaknesses and that way you can focus uh, more on your strengths and so as we're beginning to wrap up wind down here i kind of have two or two maybe three uh, final questions here one thing is uh, i've always wanted to know like what's your current whole setup as far as like all the businesses before we started talking here we you said that you have a couple of uh different like brick and mortar businesses and income streams. If you're like, like breaking that down really quick and telling us like, what are all these uh, different uh, kind of like, you know, businesses you have set up these days? Oh, where do we even start? So my main business is my own uh, medical clinic, medical practice. So we have our own spa here in North County, San Diego, executive medical. If you ever come down, we have a to see you. Uh, and, that's kind of my main business. I also have um, investments in other type of clinics that I've helped start. We have weight loss and other med spas that I have I either co-own or become a medical director of. A handful of those are in the Southern California area that I come in and I visit and I work with partners. I help them with the marketing as such, give them direction. Uh, and what, what's, what I love about it is it's passive income. I'm still involved with it, but I'm not doing the day to day. I'm not seeing the patients. We have employees to do all of that. The, I call that my active income. Then the second income is I have my passive income, which are things like investments. Uh, you know, I own some real estate. I do some affiliate marketing. Um, I have some uh, books that I was a publishing company that I have on Amazon that I, that I sell that I've had for like, you know, five to 10 years. that still, still make money. It's, it's crazy. And then I have what I call my passion income, which is the things that I love to be involved with, is um, my consulting and working with in you know, a group setting. I don't do one on one, but in a group setting with physicians, other healthcare professionals, getting them started with their my own business. And that's something that why I call it a passion income because I really get you know excited to do. Not like I don't get excited in my other stuff, but you know I'm talking with entrepreneurs and talking with physicians where they're both two groups that that I, I love dearly and I love seeing things grow and seeing things change like you know helping this doctor who was burnt out uh, working for a big uh, multi conglomerate uh, company I won't tell you the name and runs runs with Pfizer but <laughs> she got she got uh, you know almost in near tears and now she is like the largest uh, weight loss clinic in Denver um, and just seeing her grow and seeing her, how she's changing lives and, and, and empowering other people. That's what gets me uh, excited. So those are the, the, the my three kind of main things. And, and these days, I think 
Um, it's just a combination of it for, for me. I think I would be very worrisome, especially in, in medicine these days, to have my entire income based upon one income just because there's so much turmoil. You know, we're seeing insurance rates diminish. We're seeing, you know, people get uh, laid off even, even um, or uh, even one lawsuit, you know, one bad malpractice lawsuit and you could lose your, lose your license. So I'm all about creating multiple streams of income and especially in income, what you're passionate about uh, and that gets you excited for the day. That's, those are the kind of things that, that, that really drive me. Awesome. I, I love it. And you're so right that it's always a good idea to diversify and just not depend on one stream of income. And, you know, people always talk about things like, you know, how, how focus, but even Mark Zuckerberg doesn't have focus, right? Like he has right. Facebook, but there's also things like Oculus Rift, Instagram. Right, and right. so, so it is possible if we can remember to let go and build a team and have people do some of the work for us, we can have maybe the, these three or so different pillars in our business and maybe they can even uh, help scratch the same itch, especially like with you, like you have, you're in the medical field, you built your practice, but then you're helping other people build their practice. And it also works as far as the, the marketing and publicity for you because they see that you have a successful practice. So then you're not just, you're not just some doctor who's retired and who just feels like, you know, telling people what to do. You're, you're in the trenches there and you can tell them and help them with what, what it is they're doing. And like you said, if one of these, uh, one, one of these one thirds of your income dries up, then it's not all gone. Or if you get bored or you feel like selling the business or moving on or whatever, now you have these options. So speaking of having options, when you see doctors out there and, and like you're dealing with all these different uh, physicians and seeing what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, do you ever see like a number one mistake out there of what doctors are, are doing incorrectly in like in any aspect of internet, entrepreneurism, their business, just any, anything that you just keep seeing these doctors making this mistake and you say, don't do that. Most people should just fix this one little thing. Does anything come to mind along those lines? Yeah. The biggest thing that I see is inaction. That's probably the biggest thing that I see. A lot of entrepreneurs versus entrepreneurs, they see things. And, and I was that way as well. Um, and, and the reason is, is as physicians, we're risk averse. You know, we, we are concerned, obviously, you know, we're, it's part of our training. You know, if we make a mistake, you know, we could potentially kill somebody, right? Well, you probably don't have to go to that level if you're talking about you choose, chose the wrong color for your landing page, right? Or you sent out an email and maybe gave the wrong link, right? It's all about implementation versus research. We can research till the cows come home and wait for a double-blinded placebo study, but you know, as you know, all of our friends is like, I just did it and it worked. Or I just did it and it totally bond. But I'm able to pick myself up and go, go again. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing that I see. And then to that, the second, the second big problem is control issues. Is they want to do everything that them, themselves. And I'm kind of the same way. And like, I'm going to do my, my landing page. So I'm going to get like lead pages and click funnels and I'm do everything like that. And I'm going to fear it all of this kind of stuff out. And then it was like, I was like, I'm not a Photoshop expert. <laughs> and I was like, there are now like apps that you can get and there are programs you can go to Canva and get all that kind of stuff done or hire them on Fiverr. And that's the biggest thing. And what happens is they try to do everything and you can't do everything in this business. People are, things are getting more sophisticated. Uh, and, and what's gonna happen is your business is gonna suffer. So you gotta put your, like we talked about before, you gotta put your ego aside let people who are much better at doing this than myself and let them do what they do best, empower them. And then for that reason, your entire business will grow. Fantastic. I love it. So, so give up that control and take some action because it's not like killing a patient. If your little experiment doesn't pan out, if that uh, F printed FAQ questionnaire or that, that book or that website, if that doesn't pan, pan out, it's just the experiment that failed. And then you can go in do a new experiment or redo with some slightly different things change, or maybe even just tell someone else, Hey, you, you employ, you figure out lead pages or click funnels. I don't care if the landing page is green or blue, just give me a landing page. So that way it gets done and it doesn't uh, exist there in theory land. So this is all a, a lot of great, uh, a great, a lot of great stuff, things, 
that are new, things that are great reminders for everyone. We want to make sure that everyone knows uh, how to find you, how to talk to you, what you have to sell here. So when if people are listening here and saying, man, this Dr. Mike Wu Ming guy, he has it all figured out. He's exactly the kind of person I need to have a chit chat with. Where can they find you online and what should they be doing once they find you? Best way to go is my main website, which is bootstrapmd, bootstrapmd.com. Uh, we've got courses in there. We've got a contact page. If you're looking to get consulting, whether you're a physician or you need, if you're not and you just need someone to talk and just see where you want to go in your business, uh, I might be able to help you out. I'm also uh, recently been focused, uh, have a chapter in your, in your book, Level Up, that you need to pick up on Amazon. There's a chapter on that. Tells you a little bit more about my story, more in depth than what we had a chance to talk to you today. Um, that's another thing that we're coming up. And then the third thing they want to talk about is my book that's coming out called The Physician, Physician, The Physician, Physician. I hope to launch that probably in the next few weeks that you can go ahead and purchase a copy on Amazon. And uh, that's something that, as I mentioned in the past, I use uh, a lot of what you taught me with the, you know, your WWHW. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, format uh, that, that again, I want to thank you for, for teaching that. It, it was mind blowing. You need to pick that up, book up as well. Um, it really helped me to get my message across and, and really help the readers uh, to really communicate what I wanted to for the reader. So those are a couple of ways that you could find me. Fantastic. And so to, to find Dr. Mike, you can uh, search on Amazon to find that physician, physician book. That is Dr. Mike Wu Ming. You spell that last name W O O M I N G. And then he's in the, the level up book that's at booklevelup.com. And then the most important place to go is bootstrapmd.com. That way you can go there and, and poke around, see what's there, uh, sign up for his list and see what kinds of uh, books and resources he has available. And if you want to do start a quick chit chat with him, I'm sure there's a contact button of some kind on there, right, Mike? Perfect. Yep. Right at, right awesome. on, right on the website. Yep. And and there there's just the internet is full of so many people out there who they don't sign the guest book, they don't leave the Facebook comment, they don't uh, send the quick email, and all of us all of us who have podcasts or are on podcasts. We, we love hearing from people, even if you have nothing to say, even if you went to bootstrapmd.com and you said, hey, Dr. Mike, I've got nothing to really uh, to, to say here, but I listened to your episode and I love it. Little things like that make such a difference. Plus, if there is something that you think Dr. Mike can help you with, or if you have any kind of question, go to that contact form because you never know where that conversation might lead. He might be your, your Frank Kern of some kind. He might be the person oh. that that inspires you and kicks you into action so you never know. And it's easier to just take those couple of minutes to do it. So go to Bootstrap MD and we'll see you there. You'll be glad you did. And thanks Dr. Mike for showing up and uh, being real and honest and open with us and telling us what we need to know. Again, whether we're a doctor and entrepreneur or just an entrepreneur, either way, there's something to be gained. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. It was a pleasure. All right, cool.